Welcome to the R7 Podcast, sponsored by M is Good. R7 is an innovative, God-inspiring process that explores personal and professional purpose. R7 analyzes seven strategies to transform your vision and find direction in your organizational marketing. R7 establishes clarity and guidance for the gift we call life. What up, Dave Bennett? Back in the house. What's up, Senior Jones? Took a couple weeks off. We did. We what did you do in, while you were furloughing in Vegas and Florida? It, and <laughs> I think I spent multiple Amsterdam. weekends. No, I think I spent multiple weekends in Michigan on a boat. So it was good. How about you? Uh, I've been playing a little bit of golf. Not going to lie. But I'm excited to be back in the podcast today. Today we're talking about faith. Exploring faith from all angles. How do you like that topic? Dave Bennett. I think it's a good one because I think it plugs into R7 and I think it's pretty important. And where do you think it plugs into R7? Well, let me ask you this. Yes. Let me ask you this question then. Okay. Do you think faith is the same thing as belief? Hmm. Is it the same? I would say no. Why? Well, when we're talking about, well, let's let's back up. What is a definite? What is the biblical definition of faith? I think, it, I think that brings you back to Hebrews. Hebrews eleven one. It yep. says what? I don't even have it in front of me. Uh, faith is the things that are hoped for, the things not seen. Yeah. And yeah. then what's what's belief? What do you think? I asked you first. Well, when you're having faith in something of that, you know, there's something that doesn't exist, but you go for it, is more of a inspirational heavenly thing. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna unpack this today. So so faith is, you know, I have faith in my process. Like yeah. I believe this is gonna work. There's nothing spiritual about it, right? I have faith in God or in Jesus, a higher power. Therefore, I'm just the pimple on the ass of life. Yep. And I'm going through my day and there's a bigger plan for me because there's more, you know, there's bigger parts of the body than me, you know, or there's other parts to the body than me. And so I'm just in this small, very small narrative. Um, so faith in, you know, higher power. And then there's just the faith in yourself. So do your skills match what you're trying to accomplish? So there's, those are the three categories. We know that faith is not a... Uh, noun, it's a verb. You have to take action yeah. on something. Yep. And so belief is a little bit different than that, you know? Um, and so when you have belief in a higher power, belief in yourself, belief in your skills, you know, belief is more on the tangible side that I've done it before, right? That I'm, that I've already, you know, have the confidence to do it. Faith is much more aspirational, Faith is much more, you know, it's 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 like I don't have anything, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Like, how can you prove God exists? Tangibly, you can't. Can you? Yeah, well, I mean, I think especially we are in the middle of this kind of date where we are right now, right? We're a little past halfway in the Paris Olympics. Okay. And so, you know, the Olympics always give us really tangible stories of people that had belief in what they were going about, what they were going to do. Mm-hmm. And that belief, you know, is linked at the hip to confidence, not overconfidence, but confidence. But then in the middle of all that is this thing called faith, right? Does every Olympian have it? I don't know. I think they all have belief. I think they all have confidence or else they wouldn't get there. But I think faith in this definition that we talked about, the biblical definition, you know, faith is something based on what you cannot see. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to have that faith and that faith, if you have it, you know, especially in God that we both share having faith in him, it provides you a sense of peace where belief gives you confidence. And peace and confidence are different. Yeah, and so belief has more confidence set aside to it, you know, because you've done it in the past. But faith is something, faith is is different, you know. Um, 
now, and I guess it depends on the pathway that you take in terms of faith and my skills, right? Yep. I've done it before, but I really don't know. I'm going to go do it anyway, which goes back to confidence and belief. It's probably a Venn diagram, you be. know, where it's kind of overlapping, you know, uh, at the end of the day. Yep. Um, and then, and then there's the four components of faith that's described by James Fowler in faith development theory that says, okay, there's faith in my identity. There's faith in my perceived impact. There's my expressions of faith. And then there's my overall faith development. And that brings down another kind of drop down menu is how is my faith developing, you know, and, and, and what are the phases of that, which when Fowler developed this model years ago, many, many years ago, I think it was there in the early fifties and sixties. Um, nobody's really put in any other type of development model around faith uh, outside the Bible. Um, to, to say this is kind of the revised theory of this and, and has gotten any academic or scientific um, strength. Um, there's nothing really else out there. So people that are using it, using faith in a, in a proven process are using Fowler, which is somewhat interesting to me because I don't, I don't know that if you look at his uh, developmental process, you know, I don't know that it's linear as he explains it. So in his processes, look, he looks at like the intuitive side of it where, you know, faith begins from ages two to seven. And then there's the literal faith, which, you know, is a progression. Um, and that's really happened from ages seven to 12. And then there's the conventional faith, which happens at the adolescent stage. And then there's reflective faith, which is the early development. And then the midlife faith, right, where we're sort of, becoming more open to different viewpoints while holding our own beliefs. And then there's a universal faith where, you know, we become radical and committed to our love of whatever it is that we're, you know, loving at that time based upon our views, right? So our radical faith would be now being in our fifties is that we love Jesus. That's our radical faith, right? Or somebody else may have the radical faith in, whatever you know right. in sports or uh, politics or you know pro-life or pro-choice do you think it's worthwhile to break down these kind of four components of faith and look at them a little bit yeah we can do that would you yeah. like to yeah let's go yeah so that first one faith identity mm -hmm. really talks about how faith is incorporated to your sense of self within whatever arena you're in whether it's mm -hmm. life a job sport or whatever and talks about kind of your identity who you are how does faith play a role in who you are now you know we've talked about identity before identity gets tricky when we tie our identity to a post right mm -hmm. that post of work sports whatever that i am you know like you've talked about you know you have been able to coach pro athletes that when they get ready to retire, they struggle with the identity piece. Mm -hmm. So like, but I've always been a hockey player. I've been a hockey player since I was six. Now, who am I? I have no idea. And I think that kind of puts you in that faith identity crisis. So when you think about faith from an R7 perspective with a person, how do you take somebody whose identity may not be in the best place and help ground them? What do you do? Well, and yeah, so that's a great question. All comes back to vision, right? Who, you know, and understanding vision is really understanding who you are and where you're going because you're really putting a, you're, you're, you're grounding yourself in a brand based upon that vision messaging. And so my faith, I mean, my faith walk and my belief in, you know, higher power or belief in myself is all kind of cooked in there in that faith side, but it's also part of the strategy. You know, and it's also part of the messaging. And so, like, you know, if we were to take hockey, for example, you know, just as a sport to use, um, you know, if my identity is in what team I'm on and in what league I'm in, so if I'm in the NHL on the New York Rangers or the Flyers, you know, your identity is different than, you know, um, somebody who's not played hockey or has played in the AHL or ECHL, a lower league than the NHL. And so my identity is there as a player, 
But if my faith identity is strong in my core values as a Christian or a man or woman of God, then I don't have that faith identity that's so closely wrapped to my profession. And so we have to begin to kind of curve that idea that your identity is not in what you do. Your identity is in who you are as a person put on this planet. So a few episodes ago, we had our two of our kids yeah. on, right? And both of them are going on to college to play college sports. By the way, I just dropped him off two weeks ago. All right. Yeah. Go He's, Utes, a Ute yeah. He's a Ute now. <laughs> yeah, I, I dropped mine off on Monday. Nice. Um, so how have you tried to help Brady, Brady Jones? How have you tried yeah. to help Brady through this? Because it's so easy to fall into the wrong spot at that age. Yeah, you know, and it's it's not a weekend talk or a five minute talk. This has been something that's, you know, he's been around for years, right? And so, you know, it's 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 really understanding. Hey, man, like you're not playing tonight. You know, that's not who you are, right? Like your identity is not in your playing time. Yep. You know, um, <clears throat> he's won national championships. He's lost national championships. Well, I shouldn't say that. he's lost games that didn't put him in a national championship tournament. And so at the end of the season, Hey man, that's not who you are. Right. Right. We're talking, you know, like who are you in Christ? You know, you're bigger than that. Yeah. 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 You know, I think the next thing for him um, is transitioning from a hockey player to a, cause he wants to own a business. He's taking entrepreneurial um, classes and, you know, trying to own a business is, is now his identity is going to shift over to a business owner which is now going to have to start that process of, Hey man, that's not who you are. Right. Like, you know, the chances of him having a successful business, you know, are slim to none. And so he's probably going to start multiple businesses to see which one sticks. And so really his identity in being, you know, a man of God who's committed to a process or committed to excellence or accountability or persistence is going to be his identity. Well, at least that. we'll, you know, we'll try, you know, but it's a struggle for everybody. And this yep. is not easy stuff in that identity. I love the players, whether it's NHL or NFL, that really say, you know, thank, you know, they, they give glory to their Heavenly Father, you know, as their identity. That's definitely, you know, help a lot more helpful for their identity than it is, you know, I'm the best and I won the Super Bowl or I won the Stanley Cup, you know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, again, as you can see, and if you're listening at home or in the car, this idea of faith identity is a big one. You know, and it's one you got to wrestle with. And I don't know that it's one you ever 100 percent solve. I think it's no. more of a I think it's more of a tension to manage than a problem to solve. For yeah. Sure. And, and you think about it in terms of stress. Right. And in pressure, stress and pressure and, you know, um, anxiety. You don't get rid of stress. You don't get rid of anxiety. You, you work with it. You deal yep. with it. And this yep. is the same thing with your identity. It's a process. There's no right or wrong answer in terms of the overarching goal, where you want to go. You just got to be strategic and mindful of yep. when you're in a valley to say, you know what, this isn't me. I'm fighting out of this. This is really who I am. And that's a, that yep. is a constant battle. Yep. Yeah. So that faith identity is big. The second one is this perceived faith impact, Yeah. which refers really to the influence that, people believe faith has on their performance on their behavior you know and their emotions related to that including the consequences you know that people faith and face in those arenas so is faith something you blame if it doesn't go right you didn't have enough faith because <laughs> when i read that that that's my question it's perceived faith impact you know you didn't have enough faith you lost sorry yeah, smell you yep. later, loser. <laughs> yep. Or is faith, you know, the peer pressure that people put on you that yeah. you allow your emotions to drive you? That maybe, yeah. maybe I didn't have enough faith. Maybe, maybe I'm not a good Christian. Or maybe, you know, like I always get a kick out of, you know, two teams who are in a big game, they're praying. Yeah. You know, like who's got the more faith? Who has a stronger prayer is going to win? God's like, hey, <laughs> hey, which one? Yeah. 
10 people prayed um you know versus five we're gonna lose the game no you want you, you something funny being a huge notre dame fan so mm -hmm. you know in 1993 game of the century charlie ward is playing for florida state wins the heisman that year second game um before the end of the season is in south bend and notre dame beats them and they look they go to the grotto on the back end of the basilica on campus you can find this mm -hmm. if you google it and that's where people pray on campus at Notre Dame. They light a candle, and the grotto's built into a hill. That thing is overrun with candles. Candles are mm. falling over on candles. It's crazy. And they win the game, and they keep showing it on NBC. Look, look at the grotto. That Everybody prayed. And next week, they're at home against Boston College, unranked. This broke my heart. And Notre Dame loses on a last-second field goal. And they were undefeated at this point, number one in the country, last second field goal. And NBC goes back to the grotto. There's one candle lit. Oh, people didn't pray enough, man. And I'm like, come on, man. It's like, like God went, no, no, no. I don't think so. You know, so you're, you know, you're right. And the challenge is with this idea of perceived faith impact is kind of what you said a few minutes ago about faith being a verb and not a noun. Mm -hmm. right where if you just sit around and you wait but i have faith i'm going to sit around and wait and i'm not going to have any action attached to that you can perceive the faith that the, the impact well maybe you didn't have enough faith and those of us that are people of action are like well maybe you should have actually stood up and done something yeah because faith is action faith is action you know I, I think about you know those two players praying right and what's the answer you know, what's the answer to the outcome of the game? Does God care? And I, I kind of feel like, and I love your input on this, is that God doesn't care about the performance at all, right? What does God clearly want? He wants the glory. Absolutely. Right? And so, and I kind of feel like, man, like, at least in my walk, like, I, I kind of feel like when I get in a valley, God wants to test me to see if I'm going to give him the glory in that valley. Yep. And, you know, cause that's, that's really like, it's easy to give them the glory when you're on top, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially, yep. you know, you're winning, you know, it's easy. But what about when you're in the Valley, man? Like when things aren't going so well, who are you give the glory to and who are you blaming? You oh, know, yeah. I, I feel like that is the answer before and after the game to give them the glory, no matter what happens that your character, your integrity, your accountability is going to be Christ like you know, win or lose. Totally. Yeah. And that, and that's kind of what I hope when you do see two teams circled up and they're praying before a game is they're praying for safety. They're praying for emotional intelligence. Yeah. So I think, I think you said the last few years, you know, sports is a Petri dish of emotions, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that they make really good decisions. I agree with you. I don't think God cares if they win or if they lose. It's just, it's not a thing, but it's more about, did you honor him? Are you a person of faith? And did you honor him with what you had? Or did you take all the glory for yourself? You know, what are you really doing? Because again, you know, God's going to use a win to sharpen and help you. He's also going to use a loss to sharpen and help you. Yeah. You know, I, I do think that there's, I, I do believe in the Holy Spirit. And I do believe that, you know, there are things that come, come and go to us. I feel like the Holy Spirit is like an information superhighway that if we were to stick our head into, you know, into that highway of information, we would just be <laughs> completely overwhelmed. Yeah. But there are times throughout our day that God is speaking to us. And oh, I think yeah. the world is set up for a lot of noise yeah. and a lot of distractions so we can't hear them. And so part of that honor is being able to hear and see the direction that which you're supposed to go based upon God's direction. And uh, maybe that happens in a game, and maybe you hear it, maybe you don't. You know, yep. that's but whether the, the whether the conclusion is win or loss is just not part of. I I don't think. I mean, <laughs> who am I to know? You know, know what God is thinking, but I just don't. I just I just don't think that's it. I hear you. I hear you. So so we're kind of we're kind of playing with this idea, right? We've talked about faith identity and perceived faith impact, and we're. Mm -hmm kind of also delving into the third one, expressions of faith, which are the observable means through which faith is demonstrated through actions, verbalization, and rituals. So yeah. it's expression of faith, right? So you got to perceive faith impact as to did you have enough, did you do the right things? Then you have the expression of it. 
you know, and so how does that work? How does that work to you um, for you regarding this idea of expression of, of faith? Like, is it something that in the R7 process happens at certain stages or how does that actually work? Yeah. So I think we go back to vision and, you know, like this new vision gets pulled out or pulled out of you and you, you know, it's short, portable, easy to understand, memorable, inspiring statement. In fact, I just had a session today where we're really working on it. It's a really stretch for this particular uh, executive. And, uh, you know, he, I don't think he's buying it at all, hmm. you know. And, um, you know, I remember uh, early on in my career, I was mentored by Tom Adama, which is John Maxwell's right-hand man. And he said the three problems of vision is one, you don't have it, two, you don't believe it, and three, you aren't communicating it. And so in this expressions of faith, you know, you have this vision, you go, I just can't see financially how I'm going to get there. I don't have a team. Yep. Like, how am I going to put this thing together? I just don't know. But you go anyway. You do it anyway. You know, you were talking about um, the Olympics, you know, about their faith. You know, like, like they're going to go win gold. Are they really going to go win gold? I mean, it takes a little bit of faith and courage to put yourself out there. Yep. Right. I'm mean, probably more belief, like you said, but man, just to go and say, you know what, I'm going to win. That's a lot of faith, you know, um, to be able to put yourself in, in, in a climate where it's not comfortable and there's a whole lot of pressure and a whole lot of stress. Now for Simone Biles, you know, doing the Biles too at this point, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty routine, yeah. but you know, you know, a couple of years ago we talked about that. You remember uh, of when she got the, the twisties, Yep. Yep. And so, um, you know, for her to have faith to go through that, that would have been tough with the twisties, you know, because she's just completely disoriented. That would have taken a lot of faith. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But again, I think, you know, to your point, you have to have, I think part of this, you have to have some sort of an expression of it. Yeah. If you really bought in and you're having that faith, there has to be an expression tied to it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, whether it's housed in vision, housed in strategy, housed in mission or housed in all of them, you have to have that faith component. If not, you're just pretending. Well, yeah, it's back to the noun and a verb. Yep. Right. You're just a noun. You're not a verb, man. You're not taking action. I, I remember early on when we were, um, when we were formulating uh, R7 and R7, the seven is action and below it, um, you know, the kind of the subtitle, the H2 of action was God can't steer a parked car. I love it. And, uh, you know, some haters came back as like, God can do anything, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he can do anything, you know? Um, but when you're sitting there doing nothing and not, not much is going to happen for you, man. You know, yeah. like, can, can God <laughs> move the car? Yes. God can move the car. <laughs> but he, you, <laughs> you gotta move. He may have to motivate you in a way that you don't like. Right. Right. <laughs> Ask Jonah. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You go the opposite direction. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have the faith identity, the perceived faith impact, expression of faith and the last one, faith development, which kind of brings together the documenting. This is interesting. And I want to kind of get your thought on this documenting the changes in your, maybe your relation, the religious experiences, you, what you believe, your emotions since they started associating their faith with what they're doing. So why documenting? Because when, when, when I think about that, I thought that was pretty interesting, an interesting word practice idea to use in terms of, hey, your faith development is all about how you document your changes in these areas. So I'd love to bring up Habakkuk here. So Habakkuk 2.2, this is a time where... Uh, is when you know Nineveh is crazy and nobody wants to go to Nineveh because it's the way I look at it, it's kind of like New York and Los Angeles in the 70s. Mm. Anything goes, and it was so crazy. So, you know, you're talking about rape, you're talking about stealing, you're figured, you know, you're talking about the beheading people for no reason, like every anything goes. And so Habakkuk it goes up on this watchtower. And says, God, it's crazy out there. Now, obviously, I'm paraphrasing, but 
He says, God, it's crazy out there. And I just, are you even there, God? Uh, you know what? I'm just going to sit here until you answer me. And so God comes back with this answer to Habakkuk. It says, write the vision on a tablet and make it plain. So a runner running by, this is the Amplified, so the runner running by can see it and carry it with them. So the way I look at this is, is like, you know, it's you and I driving down the highway and we see a billboard that says McDonald's next exit. It's easy, right? We get off if we're hungry and don't want a burger that's really a burger. But, you know, like, so we just get off. It's easy. But if you see a billboard that has more than 11 words on it, you know, it's like I, I couldn't read it. I was going too fast. And I think this is interesting with the with the development side. When you write it down, something magical happens. You know, the verse is write the vision down on a tablet and make it plain. Right? And so you got you gotta write it down. And so journaling is always very powerful when you journal. And so I, I believe it comes out. There's probably other scripture that that referenced the writing. But this one, this one is the one I use. Um, and I think when you write stuff down, it just, things happen. And you're able to remember. And when you journal, things happen. Because you have this post-game reflection on what was happening a, a year ago. You know, it becomes incredibly powerful. Yeah, that's awesome. So as you grow and you develop, it's important to chronicle that, whether it's in mm -hmm. a journal or whatever, so that you can kind of see you know, see your development. And, uh, you know, the thing is, you know, exercise enthusiasts, people out there. I remember P90X was all about this. It was like, yep. write down your stuff yep, so that you can see your growth. Write it down, you know, be efficient, you know, and I think and I agree with you. I think there's power in that. Super powerful when you write it down. And also what I love about it, too, is it giving you that reflection point to say, OK, what was I doing a month ago? We can't remember. We did an hour ago. You know, and you have that reflection point, you go, okay, this is this is good. Um, so, yeah, so what is faith? You know, you know, how do we navigate faith? Why is it important to R7? You know, there's a point where, you know, you have this, this bit of, you know, um, uh, this, you just can't see yourself in the next five years, right? It's like in the imposter syndrome. You know, like you feel an imp like an imposter going, hey, I'm going to end slavery, whatever your vision is. You go, Man, I don't even know why, you know, but you got to go for it, you know, and this is where the faith really, the faith in yourself, faith in a higher power, faith in the process, you know, having these and being aware of them that you may be weak in it is okay, right? Or you may be strong in it, it's okay. You know, we've got to step forward and faith is a verb. It is not a noun. It's a good Love point. it. Yeah. All right, final words, my man. What you got? You just kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but I think I think faith is something that if you allow it to just be touchy-feely and keep it at arm's length and out there, you're not going to see much difference. You know, mm -hmm. you got to kind of jump in with both feet, grab the bull by the horns, exercise your faith, figure out kind of again, where's your identity? How, how, what impact does faith have? How do you express it? And then how are you growing in it? Write it down and figure it out. You know, um, don't leave it to chance. Don't just put it out there and be like, my faith is growing. Well, how do you know? Don't know. I just feel better. You know, your feelings will change day to day. They will mislead you most of the time. Have a process and follow it. So I think that's, I think this has been great. Yeah. You know, another thing too, you know, I said you had final, final word, you're going to have another word after this. You're going to have it. Go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I also think that, you know, if you don't have faith in whatever you're doing, some of your friends do. Mm -hmm. And so take some of theirs, Yeah. you know, man. and if they don't, if they don't have it, man, like I, I had a mentor tell me once, listen, if you don't like where you're at, get a new set of friends. Because if you take all five of your friends, you're like, you're right in the middle of everything that they're bringing to you, whether it's financial, yeah. emotional, physical, spiritual, you are a culmination of all five of your friends. And so if you don't like where you're at, go get some new friends. And if you're weak in faith, find some, find some friends that have a stronger faith than you 
because God's got a big plan for your life to get you where you need to go. Heck yeah. And so, yeah. So, all right. I love it. I love it. Love you, man. You see too, you on bro. the next, see you on the next, uh, R7 podcast coming you next week with a special guest that we'll announce midweek. See ya. Ooh, let's go. Thanks again for joining us. I want to give special thanks to our sponsor, M is Good. If you want to learn more about M is Good, go to misgood.com. Join us again next week as we continue to uncover the secrets to success with faith based testimonies and the power of R7. Remember, destiny awaits, but time does not.